you know, if all you're going to see is a person that needs to be physically healed before they can meet Jesus, what's the point of going to church? Hey everyone, this is Christian with Living Able. Today's video is going to be a bit different than usual, but I hope that you'll find this worth sharing with your church, with the community in general. Now, if you've looked at the title of this video, you've already seen that today's video we're going to talk about ministering to the disabled in church. This is the time of year when a lot of us that maybe don't go to church uh, every week or maybe have never been or only go once a year will be going to church. And unfortunately, over and over and over again, I have heard from different people when you go to church, certain things have happened that just really push you away from church. And so I want to share these experiences and hopefully teach the church uh, how to better minister to people like me and you. But I hope that you'll find this worth sharing with your church. So I think the best way to show you guys what I'm talking about is to tell you two stories that have happened to me. Now, one happened in my church and one happened at another local church here. So this first story, I was visiting a church. Now, it was a church. It's a church that I've done other things with. I was very familiar with their young adult ministry and that kind of thing. So it was not my first experience with this church, uh, thankfully. Uh, I, lo uh, I love this church. But when I was visiting this time, I went to what I call big church, you know, which is the main service on a Saturday or a Sunday. And I went to the church. It was a great service. And then after the service was over, I was just sitting there to myself, kind of praying to myself and just stirring over in my soul, you know, what had been spoken to about. And about three or four guys came up to me, and they asked me if they could pray for me. You know, I've been to this church before, and that's fine, you know, definitely believe in the power of prayer. So I said, yeah, sure, go ahead and pray for me. And then, so one of the gentlemen, so he started praying for my physical healing, that they didn't ask what I wanted prayer for. They just assumed, and when they asked if they could pray for me, that, that that was what I would want prayer for. So anyways, the guy is praying for my healing, you know, saying that, you know, they want me to walk and all that. And he's very, you know, they're very nice guys. Actually, one of the guys in the groups I went to high school with, so that was, that was even more kind of ironic about this situation and <laughs> that I knew one of the guys that I hadn't seen him in a really long time. So anyways, they're praying for this. And, you know, I'm just, I'm praying privately as well about this because I was uncomfortable with the situation. Now, like, why am I uncomfortable with this situation here? I totally believe in healing. And now when he got done praying, I still couldn't walk. And I really like had to take some time to figure out why am I so uncomfortable in this situation? I'm going to get into why I was uncomfortable, but I want to also bring in this other situation that happened to me and bring the two together because the reasons I was uncomfortable pretty much go together. So this other situation actually did happen in my home church, but it was an event where a bunch of churches were coming together for a praise and worship event years and years ago. And this lady, we, I was with my friend, this lady came over and asked, could she pray for me? Not a problem. You can pray for me anytime. I'm totally cool with that. And anyways, I'm, I'm holding my, my friend's hands in a circle, and this lady, like, starts to, like, try to get my hand out of my friend's hand, which was really weird. And I didn't want to hold, hold her hand, but I just kept holding on to my friend's hand, like, what is she doing? But anyway, she did finally get one of my hands loose, 
and start praying, oh, Lord, we want to see a miracle. And, you know, she tried and she, and she literally was trying to pull me out of my chair. But I was really uncomfortable in both of these situations. And I really had to come home and think about why I was uncomfortable. I hear these stories from you guys that watch these videos. I hear this from you over and over, how you won't go back to church because all somebody saw was a person in a wheelchair that they just felt like needed to be healed and that was all that they would see and that somebody would just come up and start to pray for you. And then when they put it, when you didn't walk, you know, they just walked away and basically wanted nothing more to do with you. A lot of times I, that we're just like, you know, if all you're going to see is a person that needs to be physically healed before they can meet Jesus, what's the point of going to church? Like, and I know that that is not true. I know that I don't have to be walking in order to know the Lord and to have a relationship with the Lord. But if you're seeking a church for the first time, you might not know that yet. And there's no worse feeling than just feeling like you're not enough for God. That God would have nothing to do with you because of this situation that you yourself can't fix. You know, we oftentimes will say, oh, I'll go to church when I get myself together. But yet, Physical healing like this isn't something that we can just get together. We couldn't do it. It just can't happen. And so, by seeing somebody that's disabled and just feeling like you have to pray for their physical healing can be very overwhelming. And I would ask you if you are feeling like you are supposed to pray for somebody's physical healing to really search inside yourself and say, why are you doing this? Are you doing this because you really feel like the Lord has called you to do this? Or are you doing this because you're uncomfortable around that person? I would really ask you to ask yourself that because I don't believe that the general public feels like they are equipped to handle situations with the disabled because we're not. Oh, because not everybody is around a disabled person all the time so you don't really know what to do and i think that i think that a lot of people who are not disabled can't even imagine being disabled so they feel that if somebody is in a wheelchair there can't possibly be a way that they would be happy the way that they are and therefore you know, they feel like that has to be something that they want prayer for. But for me personally, when I want to get prayer, I, I want prayer. But there is a lot more things that I want prayer for than to be cured of being in a wheel. This experience even goes not for just the disabled, but for the family members and close friends of those that are disabled. My own parents were going to church when I was first born. But my mom has told me that when I was born and she took me to church, she always was made to feel like something was wrong with her because she had a disabled daughter. That just breaks my heart. And yet I've under I understand this feeling because I've been there too. I have been made to feel like there's something wrong with me. Thankfully, not at my church that I go to, I have a wonderful church that I love despite that situation with the woman. But I cannot imagine going to church for the first time and that being the experience that happens. So please, if you are in any kind of position of leadership or just even just a regular, con even just a congregation member that wants to pray for people, Ask somebody that what they want to be prayed for. Don't assume that that is. And if the person says, you know, pray for whatever you want to, please don't make that be the only thing that you pray for. 
if you feel like you have to. You can pray about a whole bunch of other stuff and just say, hey, we, you know, I pray that you heal it from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. And it's not as big a deal as trying to pull somebody out of their chair or making this big spiel about, oh, well, this is why you weren't healed. But I can't tell you how much it breaks my heart to hear that somebody won't go back to church because that's how they were made to feel. Being a part of a church has literally saved my life. I love my church so much. I am closer to my church family than I am to a lot of my biological family. They have literally saved my life and been there for me when I felt like nobody else was. So I don't want anybody to miss out on this experience. So please, I'm asking that if somebody is coming to your church, especially this holiday season, it's going to happen more often than it might the rest of the year, but still, I ask you to get to know the person before you feel the need to pray for their physical healing. Want to get to know somebody, see more than just their wheelchair or whatever or whatever their disability is. Nobody wants to only be seen for something, you know, physical that's going on. You know, you wouldn't want to be known as, oh, the person needs to be cured from wearing glasses. If, if every time you went to church, somebody prayed that your eyes were healed, you're like, if that was something that happened every single time you went to church, you know, you would really start to think, like, what in the world? Like, if, if I have to be healed, this isn't worth it. Like, no. So, I feel like this video has been all over the place. I really hope that you hear my heart in this. I hope that people will respond down below with other tips that you uh, can, that other tips that you have. I know this has been people's experiences. I'm thankful that when the experiences happened for me, I already had an established relationship with the Lord so that it did not shake my faith. But I know that for many people, when these things happen the first time that they go to church, it does shake their faith. And so I hope that you guys will pass this video around so that this experience is something that doesn't happen to people every time they go to church. If you watched the whole video, thank you so much for watching. I do a video like this every Tuesday, typically, even though I am late this week. I hope that if you are, are disabled and seeing this video and you haven't already, that you will subscribe. If you're seeing this video and you're not disabled, maybe you want to just learn about the disability world. I hope you will subscribe too. The best way that we overcome these situations and make sure that they don't happen is to learn from each other and to not just go by one experience that we see on TV or that kind of thing. So I hope that you'll subscribe too. Have a great day.